Oh, let's see. Where should we start? Let's pick. We'll go. We'll do some easy things. What do you think? Um, we'll start with. Let's pick up. I mean, they're all fairly easy, but let's start. Let's go with the steel blue. Okay. So I'm going to put a little steel blue on a plate and then I'm going to show you how to mix it. Did I miss something? You've said a day without painting. It's like a day without sunshine. Oh yeah, that's tough. Eve, you're painting beautifully. Hi, Cindy Wolf. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing much better, Cheryl. Thank you so much. I hope you're doing well. All your travels, I love to see. Hi, Kathy. It's your Technique Tuesday. I love it. Okay, so we have this steel, I'm going to hold this here, it's steel um, blue. I use this often, as you know. So I'm going to go to my easel. If I miss anything, um, Leslie is going to, um, to let me know or you can repeat it. Leslie, do you want to call me? And I'll just put you on speaker. Let me take it off airplane mode. My phone was blowing up earlier. So if you want to call me, Leslie, that would be fine. I'll put you on speaker. I'm going to go to my easel in the meantime. And then that way she can just read it out loud. Let me put a light on this. Yeah, I painted like most of the day today and I still feel okay. I'm pretty excited. All right, so let's put the steel blue up on the white canvas so you can see it first, okay? So I'm going to go right here. Let's make like a little dash on our dry canvases with the steel blue, okay? So we use that all the time. I'm gonna wash my brush, all right? Oh, thanks, Leslie. Let's see, hopefully it'll ring. I'm opening my phone, okay? So I talk about how you can use, this is a uh, phalo blue, this is ultramarine blue. The ultramarine blue is a little bit more purpley, but if you take, there's Leslie, Hello, my friend. I put you on speaker. Thank you. Hi, sure thing. Can Thank you hear you. me okay? I can hear you. Can you guys hear Leslie? And then she can read everything. Oh, thanks, Tina. Oh, uh, thanks, Susan. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a little bit. I'm going to show you with both. It is a little bit different color, and you can put the ultramarine blue and black and white together, or you can put phalo black and white, okay, to get a steel blue. It'll be a little bit different. Just interrupt me anytime, Leslie, okay? Okay, okay, cool. I will. Okay, so right here, so the ultramarine, white and black, there's your color right there, okay? Can you see it well? And then I'm going to put that, it's a little watered down, so let me get a little bit more paint. And I always, guys, when I mix paint, I mix like small amounts because if you're mixing a large amount of paint, it's going to take too long to get the color that you want, like the shade that you want. So I mix small amounts, okay? So we have that here, just like that, okay? So if you need that, you can go there. Or you can go to the phalo blue, which does make a little bit different of shade. I think the ultramarine is a lot closer. So with this, you're gonna have to put a little bit more black and just keep pulling it over into this pile. A little bit more black, a little bit more white, okay? So if you're using the phalo, you're gonna use a little bit more black, a little bit more white. It's gonna be a tad more blue than the other, but it's still close, see? It's very close. Any questions on that? No questions so far, but if you guys do have any, feel free, put them in there, and I will interrupt our friend here. Thank you so much. It's so nice to hear your voice. Aw, thank you. It is. How's your dog? Oh, she today has been, like, running around and playful, and my husband says, I think she's pulling a fast one on us. Aww. But She's a dog. She doesn't know if she has terminal cancer, so she's just, thankfully, she's hungry, and she's oh, been good. a little bit playful. Yeah. Good. I'm glad. So, the vet said one day she's just going to really let us know she's done. Aww. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm it's sorry. A it is. Okay, so ladies, we are going to, let's make some sap green. Here's sap green right here, okay? Can you guys, is it, there too much light on here? You want me to pull back a little? Let me see. Too much light or not enough light? Can you see the colors well or no? The colors look great. Oh, you can see them. Okay, I just want to make sure. I'm kind of blinded, so. <laughs> so if you want to make sap green, just take a little of your middle green or any of the green that you have. 
and put a little bit of black in it and darken it just like that, okay? And you can make sap green. So no need to buy sap green if you have the middle green, if you wanna mix it, okay? Just put a little bit of black in it and it'll be fine, okay? So I'm gonna put that here. Look how dry the canvases are, it still bothers me. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull my sap green out here. You'll see it's the same. So I'm gonna go right underneath here, okay? So no need to um, to buy that if you don't want to. We don't want people to have to buy, you know, something um, if, if, you know, you don't want to. So I'm gonna, this is the olive green, all right? So olive green, if you take the sap green, you add a tiny bit of white to it, maybe a little bit more black to it, you're gonna get the olive green color. Do you see that? So then I'm gonna go under here with the olive green, which is just slightly lighter than the sap green, okay? It's like that. Do the canvases drive you guys crazy like it does me? Need a little bit of water to see it. The dryness drives me crazy. You know, all your life you've been painting on a certain type of surface. Um, but yeah, I'm throwing in the olive green here and there and you don't necessarily need it. Just gray it down with a little bit of black and a little bit of white with your sap green. You'll be totally fine, okay? So let's, oh, I know one that we use. Um, let me see. I know when we use, we use this indigo. I like this in some of the paintings. So that's like a purplish blue. Let me put some of that on my plate. Okay. I'm gonna put that here, a tiny bit. I do like this indigo. I think it's pretty. You know, that would have been pretty on that truck, lovely. That's the one I was talking about. I yeah. I think it's the name of it, but yeah, yeah, I wonder that even if it was lightened a little bit, if, yeah. um, if that would be nice. So this is indigo, and it's kind of like if you have ultramarine and a uh, purple, uh, purple, dioxine purple. Sorry, I lost my, yeah, I lost it there for a minute. I'm going to wash my brush. Okay, so I'm going to mix a little, this is dark purple. I'm gonna go over to my other plate where I have my, my ultramarine blue and I'm gonna mix this together, okay? Or you can mix it with phthalo blue. It's gonna just gonna be a little bit different, okay? So mix these two together and you're gonna get your indigo, okay? So I actually think the phthalo blue would be a little bit better with that. So I'm gonna pull a little phthalo blue into that because then it wouldn't be as purpley, you know? It's a little bit of water in my brush. Um, we have a question. Yeah. Let's say I lost it. Okay, so this is from Susan Brave, and she says, can you make a color shell? I'm not sure what that means. Can you make a color shell with the colors you're developing, please? What's a color shell? So I'm not sure, but she maybe wants us to write what they are, maybe? Do you want us to do that? I'm trying Wait. to take notes, um, is, if that's what. Okay. I can type the colors in, too. Um, okay. Okay, so... We'll wait for a response. There's a delay. So here's flesh. Yes. We use this for, you know, skin tone, for gnomes, things like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and we'll pin this and we'll also put it in the membership so you have it as well. Okay. So I have a little bit of a flesh tone right here. All right. This is the first flesh that I've liked. And I usually add white to it, but you can add a little bit of um, red or pink to it as well, depending on the color you want or a little bit of brown. But if you want to make flesh tone, what you can do is just get white, put a tiny bit of orange in there, and then you can also, look how close, and then you can put even a touch of red, the smallest amount of red, and put it in this pile, okay? And there's your flesh tone, all right? So we used to mix flesh tone before I found a flesh tone that I liked, okay? And generally I add white to the flesh tone, so I end up with this tone anyway, okay? Any questions on that? Thank you. Okay, so let's see, let's see. Let's let's work on a little bit of the purple lake. You know, not everybody has the purple lake. So we have the um, doxanine purple, which is doxanine violet, actually, it's called. And then we have the purple lake. So here's the purple lake color. Okay. Yeah, I have so many new ideas in my head for Christmas. I just can't even wait in winter. So it's kind of like I go crazy with fall, and then I go crazy the next season. <laughs> Okay, 
So I have that, I'm gonna wipe off my brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit of my Dioxane purple, and I'm gonna put a little bit of red in it. All right, I'm gonna take red and bring it over to this. I hate when they're not all on the same thing, you know? I'm gonna get some red over here. See how you get very similar shade. Okay, I need a little water again because of the canvas. So I'm gonna put that right underneath there. Okay. Tina, uh, Tina would like to know about crimson after this one. Yeah, we can do that. Let me put some crimson on my plate. I actually have it right here. Okay, so I have the crimson right here. Does it not say that on the front? That's oh, very similar. It is, this is crimson. I'm like looking for it on the front though. Oh, here it is, Elizabeth, Elizabeth crimson. Yeah, Lucas paints, it's usually right here, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna put this on my plate that I have the red, one second, so you can see. You know me, I don't cut the tips off my bottles, which I should. We do at the studio what I do, and I just always like hammer it down there. <laughs> okay. So the crimson, which is a dark red right here, all right? So you have a darker red right here. I'll just put that right here. It's such a pretty color. That's the color that I used for the scarf today. By the way, when you're painting that snowman, I'm gonna have her like fast forward through the cream part so then you don't have to change it at the end like me, <laughs> you know? So you can just take permanent red. So this is permanent red, the lighter red. You can add a little bit of black to it, or you could add a little bit of one of your purples to it, okay? Or both, you know, we just wanna deepen it a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit of black in there. Just a little bit. I always, oops, I just got warmed on there. I always like to just do a little bit at a time so I get my coloring. Like I don't go past it, which I almost did right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna go right under here. A little bit more paint. Okay, so it's just like a darker red. So a little black, possibly a little bit of purple. Okay, um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Um, what's the color that you used for the book? For the book, it, it was the crimson. It was the crimson and I added black to it. And then I had like, um, I put a little gold overlay on it. Uh huh. So that was the crimson, you're welcome. So um, let's do, we have the green earth. That's in some things with the pine trees and stuff. And you know, you have more trees coming with winter and snow and all of that. So let's put a little bit of the green earth on there. If I can get it out. Yeah. While you're doing that, so Kathy Cunningham would like to know if the Lucas paints in the bottles are the same consistency as the creative inspirations. They're a little bit thicker. A little bit thicker. Little bit thicker. I actually prefer them. Um, I think I ended up with even more Lucas colors than I did creative inspirations along the way for the studio. Their pricing's a little bit higher than buying a big jug of creative inspirations, but I do, um, I do like them. But in most cases, like, um, you're only using a small amount of paint anyway, but I do love the consistency of them, especially like this is the white. That's how thick all their paints are. Um, I love it. I think that they're fantastic. Um, so, oh, I was going here. That's a very good question. So here we have the green earth. I really like this color, this green earth. Really pretty. All right, so this is a really nice like pine color. So I'm gonna go here. All right, all this is, and I'll make it a little bit darker so you can see it. All this is, I'm gonna wipe that off. You can either use like a sap green and add some teal to it. You can use a middle green and add some teal and black to it. So I'll show you both. So I'm gonna take a sap green. I'm gonna put some, some teal in it. You're already there. Okay, you may wanna add just a touch of black maybe. Not much, okay. So you have that nice color right there. Okay, so you have that. Last time we did the color mixing, I had it all nice and squared everything off. This time I'm like all messy, I'm sorry. <laughs> so then you can, if you don't have sap green, get your middle green, add some black to it to make it a sap green. Okay, so think of that way first. 
So there's your sap green, and then you're gonna add your teal to it to make it like that pine color, okay? So then you have the same color right there, okay? So there's a couple different ways you can do that. Um, let me think, let me think. Let me grab some other colors off my desk. And if you guys well, want to... thinking, yeah. Katrina wanted to know, they're from which hi, Katrina. Hi. Um, did you get the Lucas Ross Sienna ever? And she's wondering how you liked that. I did oh. just order four big jugs of it. And you know what? The other, the Lucas Ross Sienna that's at the studio, I haven't tried it yet. Because I still had some of the Ross Sienna here. Of the, because she was saying that the Lucas Ross Sienna is different than the Creative Inspirations Ross Sienna. So I ordered it because they were out of sock. I didn't use it yet. So I'll tell, I'll tell you. Maybe I'll send me a text more if you remember while I'm over there with the schools during the day so I can test it out because it's on the shelves. And the girls are probably like, why'd you get this? Because we already, I ordered all the big bottles as soon as it came in. I, when Jerry's Order Rom is out of something, what I do is I sign up to get an email when it comes back in stock and I do buy it right away because, you know, especially when we're in season. So, um, makes me a little bit nervous when like paintings are made with certain colors. We can always mix stuff, but I like to make things as easy as possible for people if I can. So this is the Arctic blue. This is in a lot of skies in our painting. So if you don't have this, this is a good one to know. So here's our Arctic blue, all right? So I'm gonna wipe off my brush. So what I'm gonna do for the Arctic blue as I stick my thumb in it, I think I'm covered in paint today, <laughs> like covered. I'm gonna go over here, I don't have any room. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out a little bit of white. I'm going to get, let me get my teal, all right? Just a touch, start with a small amount. That's too much. I'm gonna go over here, small amount, okay? A little bit of teal. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of my blue. Let's get a little bit of the phalo blue, not the um, not the ultramarine, marine, the phalo blue. Look, it's just the same. You can make the same exact color, okay? This is one of my favorite colors for the sky. I really like that when we put them on like nice and chunky, you know? Um, yellows. We're gonna talk about yellows a little bit. Anybody with me? <laughs> we are with you, okay. Trish is on, and she said hi. Hi, Trish. How are you? So nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna grab another plate. I remember when I've done this every time. I have like a million plates. Katrina, yes, I'm wasting a lot of paint. See, I'll have to paint after this again. That'll be the fourth time today. <laughs> okay, so I have a, uh, this is a cad yellow light hue. Even though it's creative inspiration, it's dark. I love it because you can lighten it. Here is the pastel yellow from Lucas, which I love also. Um, I have several different yellows in the studio, and I think they compiled over time due to being out of stock on one or the other. I have a lemon yellow, I have a dark hue, I have the light hue. Um, I like to stick with this one when it's in stock, the cad yellow light hue, and even though it's dark. And then I also keep the pastel yellow as well. The reason why I do that is when I'm, I'm creating a painting that's all pastels, a lot of people may have a hard time making it a pastel and keeping it pastel and it changes the whole, the whole painting. So I do like to have the pastel yellow on hand, okay? But I'm going to, I'm gonna paint um, the Lucas paint on here first. So you can see there's the pastel yellow. So chuck with something in there. Okay, are you leaving? Yeah. I love you. Oh, are you going to Gabby's? Yeah. Okay. Be careful. Okay, so then I have my cad yellow over here and wipe off my brush. I'm gonna get my white first. Always get your white first when you're working with pastel color, okay? Put a little bit of yellow into this, tiniest bit, okay? And then work from there. Small side palette, and then there's your pastel. But a lot of times people will use too much yellow, you know, that could even use a little bit more white as well to match up the other one. There we go. So I do like to keep that on hand. Any questions, Leslie? No questions. Um, just, uh, at, well, asking for oranges next after you do the yellow. Oranges, okay. So I only keep one orange on hand. That's one thing that I only have. Well, we have a yellow orange at the studio, but I never use it. And it was whenever they were out of cat orange, I think during COVID for a little bit. 
and um, but I, I use this cad orange all the time. So if you didn't have this, okay, I'm gonna put the cad orange. If you didn't have yeah. this, that's a brand on that one. Like, that uh, one's like Creative Inspirations. All of my Lucas colors are either metallics or they're, um, um, not all of them. I have, you know, like I said, the Green Earth. I have the Crimson. I uh, I guess they're not all metallics and and, uh, and pastels, <laughs> so never mind. But yeah, this, this one is Creative Inspirations. And so what you can do is pull out the yellow first, not the red and then put some red into your yellow, okay? And then you can make an orange if you need to. It's, it's sometimes a little bit more of a burnt orange when you do this, but you can still like make an orange. You see that? It yeah. may not match exactly, but you can get pretty close if you see them side by side. Yes. Okay. Oh, and then I'll show you how to make a burnt, like a raw sienna, a burnt sienna, okay? But see, it's a little okay. bit darker. You can, you know, and then, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, it looks like you're headed towards, um, you could head us towards sunflowers, because a couple people were saying what um, your favorite color is, what's your favorite yellow for sunflowers? That, that's my yeah. favorite yellow, the cad yellow um, light hue is my favorite from Creative Inspirations, for sure. Yeah, and then what I do is I use it, I complement it with um, the raw sienna and the Van Dyke brown. Okay, and so let's make a, um, a burn sienna, okay? So I'm out of my one that's like little reddish that's usually here, okay? So this is like an off brand, but usually, so if you want a red or burnt sienna, just put a little bit of red in the burnt sienna that you have. Um, the only burnt sienna that I actually like, I've tried a ton of different ones and it is Creative Inspirations because at one point they ran out of that too. And they're my favorite. Um, so this is like a different brand. This is um, this is actually Handy Art because I ordered off of Amazon one time and we ran away, ran out of it, and I kept it here because we don't use it at the studio. But I usually like like a redder, you know, a reddish brown, slightly like this. Okay. So if you don't have burnt sienna, I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay. So all you have to do is you take your your Van Dyke brown. You can put a little of your light brown in it. Okay. And then you can put some red in it. Okay, you can even put some orange in it too. I'm gonna put a little orange in there. I'm in tight quarters here. I kept, I kept like pulling out my dark brown. There we go. Okay, so there's my burnt sienna right here. And that's about the color the Creative Inspirations one is. It's nice and, you know, it's nice and rich as well. So I do use burnt sienna in some paintings also. Any questions while we're still going? No, everything's good. I hope everybody is not hearing me clanking on the keyboard as I'm typing. I'm trying to be light. Oh, <laughs> uh, I can't like, hear you. Is Susan on? What's Susan say? Oh, she Hi, just Susan. got on. And she said her five-year-old grandson today asked her how to make a blue color, and she had to explain primary colors. And uh, so, yay. Oh, that's so nice. Susan was here from Florida for um, a good week, I think. She got to paint with us three or four times, and she's a brand new grandbaby, and now she had to go somewhere else and take care of another family member. So she's like, she's running like crazy. So I'm just gonna show you, I really like this lavender from Lucas. Like this is a beautiful color, but it's another color you don't really need. Um, a lot of this is just out of ease, you know? So I'm gonna, let me put the lavender on my plate. Okay, so we have our lavender here. All you have to do, I'm wiping off my brush, is you wanna pull out white. Again, start with white when you're going with pastels. Don't start with the like the color color. Get a little bit of your um, dark purple, your dioxinine purple, and put it in the white, and you can easily get that same shade, okay? So I'm gonna put that here, same shade, okay? So we have that, wash my brush. Um, 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 let's see, what else, what else? Oh, the mint green, by the way. I use mint green constantly, you know? Um, let me grab it. That's one I don't have on my desk. Hold on one second. 
Let me try I have one here. I don't think I'm out of it. Me rearranging here. Oh, I have my bottle upside down in somewhere because it's almost out. But I'm trying to think of the Lucas colors that I use the most. So if you guys think of anything, like let me know um, if I'm missing anything. I love this Lucas Mint Green. Like, love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, it's in a lot of our, like, our chunky, loose backgrounds. And so I'm going to grab the Mint Green. I definitely need to paint something afterwards. <laughs> so I'm going to go here with my Mint Green, okay? Make sure you can see it. I'll put this up a little bit. All right, so we have our mint green right here. All right, so I'm going to wipe off my brush again. So what you can do is you can just get your sap green. Well, first start out with the white. Sorry. Start out with the white. And then put a little bit of the sap green into this. And look, you have the mint green. Again, just like mix a little bit at a time. And you have it. I'm going right above it. Right there, okay. Hey, did you say sap green? Yep, sap, yep, sap green with the white, yeah. Okay, and then um, Kathy's asking about magenta. Magenta. And then we have Tina reminded us of Arctic Blue. Arctic blue I did right here. Did we do? We yeah. did Arctic blue. Arctic yeah, blue is here. Yep, yeah, so this is white, a little bit of viridian or teal and then a little bit of your phthalo blue, or you can even use a little sky blue or a little cerulean. So you can use one of those three blues to get that same. So this is the Lucas Magenta. Now I have to tell you, I'll grab the Soho Magenta so you can see how vibrant, like how brilliant that color is. This is still very nice. I do use this in the classroom, but I also use this Soho Magenta. It is gorgeous. It's so thick and brilliant. Um, let me grab this really quick. But it's hard to, like, you can't really mix this pigment well, you know? So let me grab this. You can't, and that Soho Magenta is, like, worth the trip to the store. Oh, it's gorgeous. Get Look at that. Ordering it. It's Look how, fantastic. like, thick and gorgeous it is. So it's hard. You can't really mix something this, like, you know, this bright. It's just in the pigment. Um, but it is stunning. It's beautiful. We use that for like sunsets and things like that too. Um, I have that for a few paintings um, in the studio. So when I first started out, I used all um, Soho paints. And then they kind of priced this out of the market. And so I didn't want to raise my painters prices. So here's magenta. This is the uh, Lucas magenta. Okay, I didn't want to raise my prices. So now I use I use phthalo blue green when I'm doing water because I love it so much. Or maybe I'm painting like something Bob Ross-ish. Um, I love that color. Um, maybe sea turtles, things like that too. Um, and then I love the magenta. And I'm trying to think, there's cerulean blue I love also. Otherwise, I don't get any. I have to think of the cost with the studio also. So... Okay, so here's a magenta. It has a really nice pigment to it also, you know. So what we can do is we can take a little bit of red. All right, we'll take a little bit of red. Let's take a little bit of our purple lake, okay. We're not, whoops, that's too much. Hold on, I'm pulling over here. A little bit of our purple lake, all right. And this is one thing, you know, it's hard to get it mixed how we need it, you know, um, because we can't make the pigment that rich. So then I'm going to put a little bit of my, my white in here. I think I'm going to get a little bit of my darker purple instead of our pur purple lake. Like I put purple lake in there, I'm going to get a little of the darker purple and come back to this pile. Okay, and then I'm going to pull some red in again. And still, we won't get close on this. It's such a bummer, but you can get like a magenta color, but it's a little duller. See? Um, it's not going to be the same. If you added a neon pink, would that get it vibrant? Actually, yes, it would. Let me grab that. <laughs> oh, I made a hot flash. Remember that hot flash I went in after I went on the convention when I was with you guys last Tuesday or Monday? Oh my gosh, and I like had these splotches all over my face. 
Susan was like, that was like a reaction I was having after I was such a mess. And Susan texted me and she was like, are you okay? I felt so bad. This, I do like, so fluorescent paints are like slimy, you know, usually. That's the only word I could use to describe them. They're very transparent, they're slimy. I think out of all the uh, fluorescent paints that I've ever tried, I like the Lucas the best. Liquitex is very slimy. Um, nothing against the brand, but um, the fluorescence, you really have to build up, you know? So that's much better. You're so smart, Tina. You know how like my Marky would say, you're so smart. <laughs> so you're so smart. So it's a little bit brighter, you know? A little bit brighter. I can even pull in more. A little bit brighter. I still think you need a little, maybe a little bit more purpley. One thing I always try to make sure I have on hand. This is slightly different. That was a good idea though. Very smart. So I have this color, terracotta, in um, some of the paintings. I don't know if you guys like this, like brick color. I really like this. Um, so let me put a little of that on my plate so you can see that. And um, I think it's really pretty. I'm trying to think. I used that in quite a few paintings in the last six months, but I don't remember which ones. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> it does look pretty. I did you use it for like leaves or in? Oh, I think I used it pumpkins. Pumpkins. Oh, I did use it in leaves too. See, you know. Okay. So I'm gonna this terracotta. It's just really pretty. Oh, Tina cares so much about you. She said she's an EMT and was really worried about your blotches. Oh, you're so nice. Thank you. Listen, I was actually a little concerned about that because ever since I held up that board, not only did I go in the hot flashes because of my back, but when I went into one, my skin was burning like it was melting off. And that's what happened that day I was live. And it was the first time it ever happened where I would get like, I got these like baseball hives and it started on the way home from that convention after holding that board up. And Chrissy was like, uh, I think you should take a steroid right now. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, what is happening? Oh my goodness. And then we, so we stopped at a Cracker Barrel to eat after that. You guys would have died. You know how I'm allergic to like, severely allergic to gluten. I'm like a hot mess. And so we told the waitress, and um, she apparently didn't tell the chef and they would bring it back out to the table. I'm like, right, that doesn't have gluten, right? And he was like, I don't think so. And here comes the manager running out, put down that food, it was right up to my mouth. Oh my. And I almost ate it. Then I would have needed an EpiPen, oh my gosh. So I'm gonna take a little of my burnt sienna and I'm gonna put a little bit of white in it, okay? You can use a little like brown with this as well. And then you can also put, you can put a little orange or red into this, okay? A little orange should do, okay? A little bit of orange. It depends on how like peachy you wanna make it, you know? I think I'm gonna put a little bit more red into it. Cause I mixed too much at one time. So orange, red, white, and brown. But I, I do like it, I think it's a nice like brick color. This is a little bit more brown than the other one. So I mixed a little too much together. So I'm going to pull it off to the side. That's why I always like to do my small piles. There we go. That's better. A little bit more red. You could put, if you had flush, you could put flush into it easily. And I'm going to get my white and go into the pile. There we go. That's better. Now we can pull our brown in. Katrina's wondering what makes a color neon. Like she said, she was struggling to think about that. Um, I actually don't even know what makes a color like fluorescent. You know, I don't know that. That is a great question. You know, we're gonna have to look that question. up. Yeah. Listen, I'm I'm gonna mix this one again. I actually have never mixed this color, but I'm gonna mix it again. So, because I feel like that was a flop. So let's get, I'm gonna get my raw sienna. So if you type that up, take it off. <laughs> All right, it's so, on. Okay, so I'm gonna get my raw sienna and my orange. I'm gonna get a little of my burnt sienna and put it in there, okay. 
And then I think I'm gonna take a little bit, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of my red. Maybe don't type it until I get it in. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so I wanted to get, there it is. I wanted to get my, I um, wanted to make sure that I got that little bit of a red tint to it, you know? Now it's better. I'm happy with that. So see how that matches, that matches that now. It was a little off it's before. much better. Yeah, much better. There we go, we match. Um, I don't know that, Katrina. Now I have to think about it. It doesn't say in the bottle. <laughs> I have bottles everywhere now. Um, so this rose color, I'm just gonna show you. You can easily get this rose color with, um, let me find room on, whoops, I'm so sorry. Find room on a plate here, over here. So rose, you can make, I actually feel like you can make it easier with red than you can magenta. I don't know why, but um, like when I'm doing a rosy cheek, I like to, let me wash my brush. I like to use red with white instead of like a pink. Um, I don't know why, but I do. So let's find her in here and move this down. A little bit of rose there, okay? So you can do either. Let's see if I have any clean red left. Generally, also, you want to start with the white first, okay? And then add, I still had some red in my brush. So then you can add the red to it, but it's very little. You see, it's like a tiny bit. But I like this for a rosy cheek color. But I can show you what it looks like, you know, magenta-wise also. Let me get some more white over here. Uh, Susan said she hopes you're feeling much better than last week. I am. Yeah. Getting to hear. Uh, yes, I am. Thank you so much. I've been able to paint. I'm so happy. I can't tell you, Susan. Like, I feel like myself again, you know. I had, it was a good, like, nine, ten days, I have to tell you. Like, I just started feeling uh, somewhat normal yesterday. It was a rough night still last night, but today, like, I'm finally there. And so, of course, I overdo it. Like, my family told me, like, I can't not do, and not be in all the day. Like, I'm, when I can't do stuff, I'm thinking about everything I'd love to paint, you know. So then by the time I could paint again, <laughs> I have a whole bunch of things I want to do, you know. So... But here's the magenta with a little bit of white. So it's a little different shade. It almost looks a little purpley. Do you see that? I mean, it's pink, but um, I prefer the red and the white. So you can see this here. A little bit different. Not a lot, but a little. I think that's all. Do you guys have any questions? Oh, I did want to show you one other thing. I'll give you one more. <laughs> oh, by the way, so these things here are like, You'll see me use like, do you want me to, do you want me to show you like the sand and the beige because you just lighten up your your Van Dyke brown and your um in your raw sienna with some white. Do you need me to show you that? I'll leave it here for a second, just in case. Sure, go for it. Then you got it all covered. Okay, so let me show you. So this bronze gold. Okay, let me show you this. So let me put some gold on my plate and bronze gold on my plate so you can see that also. Okay. Let me get that. I think I have a plate over here that already has them both on there, but let's me get this. And then Mary wondered about an okra color. Ochre. Oh, ochre. I, I've been using the yellow ochre, yeah. So I just started using that more often, and I bought that for the studio also. Um, so this, oh, sorry, that's the Naples yellow. Hold on. Um, yellow ochre's over here. So yellow ochre, oh, that's caramel. I have, they're all really close. I'm gonna show you how close they are. Okay. But they do make a difference in your painting. Um, I'm not using, I haven't used like, this is a, this is a yellow ochre. Okay, so I'll put that on my plate. Um, very similar to raw sienna, but I'll, it has, like it's almost has a touch more like a mustardy color to it, like a little bit more yellow with white. This color I love, I think I'm gonna order for the studio, which is a Naples yellow. I think it's really pretty. Um, I think it's a nice fall color. Um, so that's not in anything yet. 
<laughs> this is a caramel color too that I just got on hand that I think is really, really pretty, but I do think it's too close. Like I don't think it's necessary to buy this anymore because it's so close to the yellow ochre. Like I ordered it, but I don't think I'm gonna keep ordering it. Uh, but I'll put that on my plate also. And then I'm going to show you the difference between the Creative Inspirations, the Creative Inspirations Gold, and then the the um, Lucas Gold. Okay, so I'll show you that. One second. Sounds good. This is so informative. Everyone is saying it's fun, good information. Oh, I'm glad! Yay! Okay, so this is the Lucas Gold. Look how, like, metallic. It's thick. All their paint is thick like that, okay? And then Creative Inspirations, we buy in those 1.8 liter jugs, those real big jugs, drop and stuff. But then I put them into, like, two-ounce cups because I don't want to bring all those big jugs home. And so it's not as metallic. But there's some things that I don't want as metallic. But let me show you how these look so you can see the difference, okay? Let's do that first. So let me go to, if you have any white in your brush, it's going to dull it down. So let me like flip this over. Okay. So let's get, my water has a, <laughs> it's magenta. Okay. So we have the, this is the Lucas Gold. So on white, of course, it's not going to look as metallic, but it's really rich. All right. So I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm gonna get the Creative Inspirations Gold. Okay, I'm gonna go above it. It's a little darker color and it's not as metallic. And you would see it's not as metallic whenever um, you see it like on color, you know, instead of white. So you have that, okay? Now, here's the Bronze Gold. I'm gonna show you how to make Bronze Gold with just your gold and brown, okay? I love this Bronze Gold. It is in, um, it's in some paintings. And so here's the bronze gold. This is a Lucas paint also, okay? So very nice, I'm gonna wipe off my brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I need more gold. <laughs> I'm going to get, I dropped it on the floor, hold on. Oh, my desk has like a million paints on it. Okay. I brought another desk in from the side, like in my, um, my next door studio, you know, that we keep neat and clean, that's white. And so I wonder how long that's gonna last. <laughs> um, I'm not using the white one, it's behind me. But I'm gonna put the gold, all right? And then I'm gonna get a touch, a touch of the Van Dyke Brown. I'm gonna touch it over there first. And we're gonna put it in here little by little. So don't like use a ton, just use a little bit, like stick the corner of your brush, into it and then go into the pile little by little by little to deepen it okay don't like put a ton of paint in there all right we're almost there when you say gold mm -hmm. um on tutorials you mm -hmm. were referring to the metallic gold correct yes mm -hmm. okay. so right okay. here you wanted to know that yeah great and question See how you can still get that same color, just Van Dyke brown and gold. Wow. Okay. Because those are kind of pricey, so that's nice oh, to know that. Oh, they're talking. very pricey. I tell the girls in the studio, don't like put a ton out for every person because they're so pricey, you know. The, the metallics, all, they are with Lucas for sure. Really, even Creative Inspirations, those 1.8 liter bottles went from $19 to $29.99 now. So. Okay. Yeah, it's up there for sure. Um, yellow um, ochre. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question. Um, so from me, when you add the Van Dyke brown to that gold, does mm -hmm. it lessen the um, metallic at all? A little bit, but not too much. As you can see, it's still pretty metallic. That's why you need to go little by little. Don't dump in a whole bunch of the Van Dyke brown, just a little bit at a time. And then Tina, we all have to laugh with her. I'm sure we feel the same way. She says this this week's Technique Tuesday is going to cost way more in Lucas Paint money. No, no, no. You can mix yeah, it. You can mix it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. No, no, Tina, you're going to make them instead. Yeah, you can mix them, Tina. I don't want to cost you any money for sure. That's why I'm doing this, to show you how you can mix them. <laughs> She's too. I love her. 
She's so funny. Okay, so that is the yellow ochre right there, okay? So what you can do is you can start out with a little van or a little raw sienna, okay? And then I'm going to put yellow into it, all right? I have not much of a side pile left, all right? Put yellow in it, make that mustardy color. Let's pull a little bit of white into it. And there you have it. So raw sienna, yellow, and white, okay? Oops, I just put the brown mark right through there. So I think we can go like a little bit darker, tiny bit. Now that it's white, I won't take it, but it's close. Yeah, I think that you can even add like a touch of the brown in here for the burnt sienna on the other. And play with myself. There we go. Okay. Nice. Yeah, it's a little mustardy than the other one. So let me, I'm going to pull out. I need a spot. Let me find a stop. Okay, so here's the color right here, okay? I'm gonna, I have my yellow. Let's get a little bit of our raw sienna, just a little bit, okay? See, I just had too much last time. That's all. And I could put maybe a touch more. Whoops, see, that's where I went wrong before, a little too much. And then we'll get a little bit of white. Much better. But now that that's wet, it's not gonna hold it. There it is, there's our color there. Put a big X over that one. <laughs> you guys have any questions, anybody? Wait, so I can't get out from under the paint. Hold on. Oh, I got this big ring light on with the, on the thing, so let me shut that off so it doesn't kill you. Any questions? I'm blinded now. <laughs> So there we have it. <laughs> I used to have a real neat one on my wall that we did last year and I kept it on the wall. But I'm so glad you guys jumped on. Like if you have any questions, say you're making something, like just um, send me a message if you need to make something, I'd be happy to help you for sure. Um, if you need anything at all. For those of you that are new, let me see, I can't even get to my mouse, I think. If you guys could see how many Lucas paints are, look. I don't know if you can see the desk is like covered the, the whole way. But um, if you ever need anything, like uh, members that are new, like let us know. Like if you're stuck on something, you can send me a picture of it. I'll definitely give you like some steps to move forward. If you need to mix something, let me know. Like that's my job. Um, I see one more spot that you can add paint. <laughs> Thanks. Listen, I waste a lot of paint tonight. Her Katrina. She always said, like, you made me mindful of that, though, how much paint I waste all the time. I've been trying to be better. Oh, I'm glad. You're welcome, Deborah. Susan, she's laughing. Color mixing is always a little intimidating, so I really like this. I'm glad. You're welcome, Kathy. Susan, what desk, right? My desk is buried. Buried. Um, so funny. But if you need anything, let me know. And thanks for being so kind and patient with me um, with this last week. I'll be painting for a while tonight. Not sure about tomorrow. It's Jimmy's 26th. Oh, happy anniversary. My husband and I just had our anniversary too. Uh, early afternoon, but this class helps so much. I'm so glad, Tina, and you feel better, okay? You're welcome. I did what you suggested, it looks better. That's awesome, Deborah. And it was beautiful, it really was. You're just hard on yourself, but I understand. Like we're our worst critics, our own worst critics. But you're painting beautifully and she's gonna love it. Dana, you're very welcome. Thank you guys so much. I hope, I think I put paint all over. Um, I hope that you guys have a great evening. I can't wait to see what you paint like next. Every time I get it there, I'm like smiling so big. I'm so excited. Oh, you're welcome, Susie. And thank you, Leslie, too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was a huge oh, help. You're so welcome. Yeah. My pleasure. And it's such a nice distraction for me, and it, it just helps me. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, just not be in my, my little um, grieving slump. Oh, so boy. thank you for having me on. No, thanks for jumping on. It was wonderful to talk to you. And thank you. You're welcome, Mary. Um, oh, thanks, Tina. Happy anniversary to you. Have a wonderful time with your husband tomorrow. We're together Married 22, together 27, I think. So I always get it wrong. <laughs> That's 
say Dolby. But have a nice night. Um, I have some other new things coming out this week. I'll do it probably in the evening because I got to teach the schools during the day, um, which I love. So Wednesdays, I don't know if you guys follow our... Um, uh, aw, Katrina's, Katrina said, love you, Leslie. Oh, that's so sweet. Love you too. And Tina, oh, hi, Ella. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm always so inspired when I see her work, when when I look at it. Oh, yeah. She's great. actually has been inspiring me to, to paint. So, yay. I, I love everybody. Yay. Jennifer, that dog, I talked about you in the beginning. Your boxer with the butterfly, the branch. Perfection. Beautiful. Your friend's going to cry if you didn't give it to her already. So fantastic. Loved, loved, loved it. Like, you're amazing. Everybody's doing such an amazing job. That was my granddaughter. Oh, that's so nice. Tell her I said hi. Aw. You guys are great. Kathy said she's sorry you're having a hard time. Aw. Yeah. We'll keep praying for you, Leslie. Lifting you up. Oh, thank you so much. It means so much mm -hmm. to me. Of course. Of course. Well, thank you, ladies. You have a nice night. Thanks for having me. Let me know if you need anything at all. Here's our email address for those of you that don't have it. And um, this will be pinned. And then also we'll put it in the membership as well under technique tutorials for the HQ membership. So you always have to look back at. Okay. So we'll see you guys soon. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thank you so much. Bye.